So today we're going to talk about a couple things. Uh, one is point clouds within Revit. So we have this 3D drone scan that right now is showing a lot of foliage, but we do see some ground in there. Um, I'm just going to hit HH on the keyboard. We also do have these topography scans um, that we did with an iPhone um, using an app called the 3D Scanner app to scan a little bit more detailed um, topography around this building. And so in this project, we're doing a bit of an addition at the side of it. And what we want to do is bring these uh, different pieces of topography together and really represent our project in a more accurate way. And so I have gone ahead and done a couple of these pieces of topography, but I want to show you a few techniques. So the first is we have this topography here and we're using a plugin called Environment. And so this environment plugin is a paid plugin. Um, I can put the link in the description below. And with this plugin, we have the ability to go from point cloud to topography. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this point cloud to topography button, and we're just gonna select our topography there. And it's gonna put a selection box around it. And so this is really the key part of this. And so, one thing I've found is if you have a really great increase in slope, sometimes the plugin doesn't grab it all. So let's just try this one and see what happens. And um, it's going to ask me what, um, and we're using Revit 2024. Um, so if you have 2024 greatest, this process will apply. So we're going to use a topo solid. We're going to pick our, our type here. So we have a, a sand and earth combination. And it's going to go through and create this topography from this point cloud. And so in the case that, um, and I'll show you another example where it won't work, but in the case where we, we don't get a really accurate topography map, um, let me just uh, reveal hidden elements. And so this uh, drone scan would be a good example. Um, when I'm to go do this drone scan, same process, we'll click point cloud topography um, it's going to create that box and say for example when I do this it actually misses a whole chunk of the topography well the solution to that actually is pretty simple and that's just confining this box so let's let's just run it and see what it looks like after we run it so we'll go run uh, sometimes I reduce the amount of points but that should be fine and we'll click create and we'll select our uh, family type there and when we run this, um, it's probably going to be a bit of a mess. Uh, we'll see what ha happens with it. But what we end up doing then is using that section box to control and maybe do a couple parts of the topography, not it all at once. And that relies our, our next issue, which is joining topography. And so once this is complete, we're going to use environments tool to actually join the topography. And, and this doesn't work. Um, super smoothly but there is a solution so what we're gonna do is grab the two-dimensional contour lines from the topography um, so up here in the environment tab there's a button that says um, uh, I believe it's not grab contours but it's something like that I'll show that in a second and once um, we grab the contours we can then add those contour lines to a new topography and so we're gonna go through that process of adding all those topography lines uh, to this so let me just pause to wait for this to complete. So now we have our topography created and so you can see this big mass topography here. Um, and uh, sometimes um, I find that uh, it grabs some weird points or maybe we don't like um, the accuracy or maybe it misses points. So again, if we need to use that section box and do it piecemeal, uh, we sometimes do that. I think this one, for example, it, it has this really deep drop here, um, which is not really that accurate. So um, we'll just leave this one like this for now. Um, but what we'll do is when we, um, let me actually see here. Yeah. Um, yeah, what we'll do is we'll, we'll use a combination of topographies. And then you also see that we do have a little bit of shore along this edge here. Um, so we might do another one in that area. Maybe I'll delete that one. Uh, let's just see. Uh, we'll leave that one. 
and then we'll just do another one just along this edge and then what we'll do is we'll go back through and join those together and and we could also use this to eliminate some points here so I think there's some pretty deep points and maybe we'll just go through and just delete some of these points and that will help um, the accuracy of that topo solid and um, and then the last part of this exercise is joining those together so a bit of a longer video um, but most of that's just for this thing pausing while it's working so I'm just gonna let those points delete and then I'll come back alright so we have some of those points deleted I think we got some work still to fix that up but what I'd like to do is try to capture this shoreline right here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do point cloud topography again and I'm going to select my point cloud and I'm just going to go to my top view here and we want to constrain that box into where that topography is somewhere in this area and let's just run that again um, we know it won't be that tall that's okay let's just create that and let's see what that does and I mean this might not work very well either but um, maybe I'll make this top uh, soil just so we can see the contrast of it when it pops up there and I don't know if that did anything yeah it didn't seem to grab that so it doesn't seem to want to grab this area here I guess there must be points or something must not be good um, let me try it once more and see if I can get this little area in the middle here so let's again constrain our area even more really we want this section right here maybe I'll just get the top of the roof of the boathouse and see if that helps so let's grab that and let's click uh, create and I don't know if this will work or not but again I find sometimes restricting the amount of area that we're grabbing that from helps yeah that did help and so that's a more accurate shoreline so let's just reset our temporary hide there so you can now see what that really should look like from a shoreline perspective so I just hid the uh, point cloud there but here's a rough idea of the topography we have so far and so the next video I will show you how to join these different pieces of topography together and uh, that's kind of a bit of a, a rundown on how we use point clouds, how we use this environment plugin. Uh, obviously a lot of information in this environment plugin, we're only scratching the surface of it, but just want to show you my workflow on, on joining these things and working with these different tools.